Welcome to Bad Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Today's Batman book we're doing is Batman Year Two. Written by Mike W. Barr with art by Alan Davis and Todd McFarlane. What? That's right. So high on the year one thing were they, of course from Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli, Yeah. I decided let's capitalize on the whole year, insert year trend that we had on literally one character Batman. Let's do it again. Why not? And we've so we've done a number of Mike Barr books, so you can bet it's going to be campy and grotesque at the same time. That's what he does. I'm right. really confused as to what on the world is just on the back of this cover. Now that is the new character that Mike Barr wrote and created for this. Uh, when Mike Barr decided to take up the responsibility of doing the second year in the post-crisis Batman continuity. Because, you know, he's like, I'm as good as Miller. I am as good as Miller. I've certainly done as many iconic stories as Miller. He wrote Son of Batman. But he was like, I love Batman's rogues gallery. I adore it. Let me create another character. <laughs> There. Let me let me have one that'll withstand the test of time yeah. that everyone will use. And everyone loves and remembers the Reaper. Which you don't fear. Even though on the back it says to fear. Yes, you must. Uh, this mm -hmm. collection here includes both stories. There's Batman Year Two, and then there's Batman Full Circle. They both feature the Reaper. Oh, it's not like Batman Year Three? No, they Batman did Year Batman Year Three later on mm -hmm. in Batman Year Three, but that one would introduce Dick Grayson. As Robin. Oh. Er, that early on? Yeah. Yeah. That In Batman's third year, he got a Robin. By year three, he was like, I need help. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't working. Let me get a prepubescent child. Yeah. There. You know what you're doing, right? Put on your target costume and draw fire. He tried to put Alfred in it. It was not a good look. <laughs> Master Bruce, there are limits. <laughs> so, this is one of them. Anyway, so bear in mind. The problem is, is he really loved the costume, but he refused to take it off around the manor. <laughs> Versus like, you know I what? Know, no, I have, I have to I can't. cut him you know, off from it. It's I need you working. in the regular butler outfit. You keep answering the door in your Robin uniform, and it's just giving everything away. So Batman Year 2 carries on from Year 1, but also carries over all the camp that Barr wants to infuse into Batman's character. So like, okay, Frank Miller Year 1 happened, right? Yeah. Forget it, most of it, except for Gordon's promotion okay. to Captain. You know, mm -hmm. like, that's the only holdover. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got a cool new story going on, so that's fun. Yes, but I'm just saying the, the groundwork, like the, the, the previous stuff you need to know to get into year two is literally nothing. Right. Okay. And also, there's a lot of camp. Like, if you read, if you're like, okay, I'm going to get into this and I'm going to jump into the year stories of Batman. Yeah. You're going to be like, okay, I just read Frank Miller's year one, which is like this gritty, noir, monologue-driven, you know, story about sex and betrayal eh, not so much in this it's more of a batman story you know the batman story is that you have been reading from the 70s onward uh the story opens with a pair of news characters uh doing their report about gotham and talking about batman and how like batman is now this thing this force that exists in gotham and he works side by side with the police and he's just a great chum Okay. You know, totally flying in the face of the year one establishment of Batman being this kind of like mythological vigilante that everyone hates and wants to kill. And the cops are not with On him. On board, yeah, exactly. Although, Gordon did build and invent the bat signal. So, okay. that's also in there. And it's, so it's just the fact that there's a bat symbol, so everyone's just like, yay, Batman's great now. More or less, yeah. Well, and Batman like helped expose some of the graft and corruption plaguing the police department and the politicians in Gotham and also the crime families thereof. Sure. Of course, this story would be retconned entirely out when better stories came along. Does that mean uh, year three is also retconned then? More or less. Okay. It's just uh, year one. And even year still... one can stay and even then after New 52, it right. was retconned out and then retconned back in. So it really depends on who's writing Batman at the time. I like that they retconned it out, but they're like, well, if we're going to retcon it back in. Just take your one. Oh, yeah. So these two are talking about how Batman's great, but one can't forget about another bemasked vigilante who stalked the streets of Gotham back in the day. Does anyone remember the Reaper? No. no. Yeah, of course not. Well, so there was this character. Uh, they only have an artist rendition because nobody who ever saw the Reaper lived to tell the tale. 
Uh, okay, but, that's just the Grim Reaper, though. Yeah, it's just death. That's just a Halloween costume. Straight up. <laughs> and it's not too far off from what the Reaper would actually look like. But Damn it. And talk about how if you just light his head on fire, you've got Ghost Rider with a hook hand. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, they talk about how the Reaper is a murderer, and you know he killed Gotham's underworld. You mean with a name like Reaper? Yeah, he wasn't like. Just, he's a farmer. Yeah, he wasn't just. And he's sowing wheat and then reaping in the reward. I mean, he, he absolutely has that instrument, a scythe, if you will. But no farm. No farm. No no tractor. Gotham is his farm. Yes. And the people are his crop. Wheat. Yeah. They're like, look, the sooner I get this in the book, the sooner you're gonna f- never forget him. Yes. So then we cut to a uh, classic Batman. Adventure where there's a couple of people stealing electronics from some building and the the report that we were watching is mm-hmm. on the TV. That's how we transition. Oh. See, Mike Barr's a professional. Uh, he actually is really good. I'm just making a joke. The bat signal kind of like was the first indication that Batman is kind of like step lock with the police department. That Like more or less we are, we have a bat force. Like we have a police force and also Batman and he works in tandem with them. Right. Uh, so then as these criminals are you know, working, the bat signal actually does the clandestinely turn on and they can see it from their window and they're like, okay, well, this, the signal just came on. He probably hasn't even responded yet. And Batman's there already. And he just beats the crap out of them. <laughs> no, I've been activated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Batman fights these guys. They break out their guns and he makes a point and I want to reiterate it because it's important for the theme of the story. He says, if you put your faith in guns, you've already lost. And then he like beats the crap out of them, and then he's like, "I'll, I would stay and wait for the police, but I've got other things to do." And then bails, and you're like, "Okay, what? Like, why is Batman so funny? He's nothing like that in Year One. Why are you making this the sequel? Doesn't make any sense. Feels like you wrote it already, and then wanted to, cr- right? You know, no, this is in. this is just a Batman story. No, I, I knew call I, it Year Two. I yeah, I read yeah, exactly, exactly. That's it. I just I, I wanted to write a Legends of the Dark Knight story." And call it this. This is the title they gave me. So I just took my story and I put this title on it. There mm-hmm. you go. So then we cut to Rachel Casbian, who is uh, receiving her father, who has been away in Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he is an older gentleman. And uh, Rachel is about to accept her final vows in becoming a nun. That's where Rachel Is she going. the Reaper? Is Rachel the Reaper? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you trying to draw... I'm sorry. Let's let's see if I can understand you correctly. Are you trying to draw some kind of thematic or visual distinction between this beclawed, Grim Reaper-themed Batman villain and you're trying to, like, make some kind of Mask of the Phantasm connection here? I am. Yeah, well, that's it because this book is exactly the inspiration for the Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Why? Oh, that sucks. No, but that movie's great. Yeah, that, that movie is amazing. great. Yeah. But like, it just ripped off this. This comic existed, and then they did it better with Mask of the Phantasm. All right. Better name. Yeah. The Reaper is a little on the nose. Yeah. Daughter and red herring father. Yeah. So mysteriously comes back from Europe, and he's like, "Yes, I'm back in my city that I hate and love." And meh. so does that mean Bruce is going to be in love with Rachel? Yes. No, he's going to be in love with the dad this yeah, time. Yeah, they're oh. going to flip. They're going to um, flip the script. That's right. <laughs> and also, like halfway through the story, we're going to get like a Joker story where right. like, we're going to shoehorn the Joker in, and then he, the Joker is going to be the enemy of the book. Right. No, it, that is a big difference. Okay. Reaper's the villain. The end. No okay. other See, I shimmied think, in uh, Batman villains. I will have to re- t- like you know not judge right now, but I feel like Phantasm still wins with that because that's interesting. Oh yeah. Well, also because Phantasm actually does a fun job of giving you kind of a background on Joker's identity, mm-hmm. while also not ruining it by giving you the Joker's identity. Yeah. You know, you just know he worked for the Valestra gang. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. Not that, like, he was a poor comedian, although I'm not going to argue with Killing Joke. Anyway, yeah. so we meet the Caspians, and we find out that Rachel and her father have worked directly with Dr. Leslie Tompkins who, of course, is the doctor who took Bruce mm-hmm. in and helped guide him into becoming Batman. So failing miserably in her ability to help this traumatically... Or she, or she did everything right. I don't know. I mean, those, those are goals. She feels like a failure. Okay. Because Batman is not the right course of action when you she deal with trauma. See, she doesn't know. She was going for Catman. She's like, why did you go with bats? They're gross and I'm allergic to them. That's disgusting. But Catman. Yeah. Anyway. Perfect. So, uh, meanwhile, Bruce Wayne 
who of course year two. Yeah. He is involved with a major project in Gotham. He's making the Wayne Foundation. Oh. Yeah, he's establishing the Wayne Foundation and kind of firmly establishing Bruce Wayne as a figurehead in Gotham's whole infrastructure. Well, I mean, here's his problem. He's missing a huge chunk of his building. It's aesthetic. So they're building the Wayne Foundation as we speak. Mm -hmm. They're literally erecting Bruce Wayne's cover story for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. But but he's excited about it. And uh, he is unveiling it to Dr. Tompkins. And she's like, it's great. What, what, but Unveiling why? it? Like she couldn't look up and see it at any point No, he time. brought her to the site because he wanted to say, your penthouse and your office is going to be there. Aw. And she's like, no. My office is in Crime Alley where I belong. Like, I mean, like, I... I, I just... none, of, none of my clientele are going to want to come uptown to Did... my big fancy building to do my to 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 be to be helped. I need to be where the people You could are. have both. I mean, nope. No, I get the feeling the people from downtown would love a chance to go uptown and be accepted. I Oh, it's clean here and the streets don't smell like sewage. Uh, that being said, you're supposed to sympathize with Dr. Tompkins and just, Bruce Wayne's It's not like disconnect. she's paying for the penthouse. She could just take it. Oh, I know, but she's not. And Bruce is like, fair enough. She could take it. And then let people stay there when they had problems or issues. Right. Yeah. No. I agree. Listen. Two this, seconds this... of thought. But Tompkins is a proud woman. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? She's so worried. She doesn't have a hard hat on. Yeah. They're on site. There's no hard hats. I know. And he's making the crews work like 24-7 to get it done. He wants to get it done like now. And he's not being a hard ass about it. They actually do establish within panel work that he's like... You know, just swap out the crews. I'll pay whatever it takes. Like, just right. just keep working. More yeah, likely, I want it going. Just just hire more people and get them to switch out. More but, than like, get likely, it done. that means that at the center of this, there's like a little like port where you could like. Yeah, shoot. like sit in a chair, pull a lever, and then get like no, I pneumatically was gonna, tubed to the back cave. I was gonna say that somebody, if they just fired the right thing into said thing, it would just blow the whole building up. They're they're just going too fast. They're just, oh, oh, you're saying they're, they're not gonna notice this small. Like a thermal exhaust port that's Something only two like meters that. wide? Yeah. You see, that's the problem, is that he already has a massive gap in the building. And they're coming. They thought about it. They're just like, no, you fire a torpedo at our building, it's going to go right through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While Bruce is regaling Tompkins with... His richness? His, his, his wealth. <laughs> and uh, his generosity. Yeah, and his generosity. He's Have giving her an entire office. Rachel came along with Tompkins, and Bruce is like, hello there. I'm not quite as miserable as my previous year established. So let's get down. So he insists on taking Tompkins and Caspian out for like a coffee. Uh-huh. So they go to like the richest place in the area and he sits them down. And he's like, so Rachel, tell me more about your life. And Leslie is looking at him like he is the biggest D-bag. She's just like, what are you doing? You're Batman. You're going to ruin this poor girl's life. And she's going to be a nun. You're trying to bang her. What's wrong with you? No, no, this is fine. This is fine. You see, I'm going to have a sidekick in a year and he can take over the business and I'll just keep banging this nun. That's, I mean, like, Batman is thinking long term. Right. He's like, Wayne Foundation. Tompkins is going to do this, that. I'm doing this. When he meets Rachel, he's like, and then I'll stop. Or or maybe she could be his sidekick. Batman and the nun. Yeah. This, this is nonsense. <laughs> That's the next book. Yeah. In their adventures. And, and he can say she's got bats in her belfry. Yeah. Wayne gets rid of Tompkins and then brings Rachel home himself. He walks her to the door and she's like, yeah. Uh, and he's like, listen, uh, I've got two tickets for the ballet if you'd like to go. She's like, well, I'm afraid I can't go. He's like, oh, you must be seeing somebody else. She's like, in a way, his name's God. And he's like, Yay. oh. Oh, well, uh, I can get a third ticket if you want. <laughs> for Jehovah? <laughs> Yeah, we'll leave it empty. (laughs) Rachel's father is wandering the streets of, like, the lowest dregs of Gotham. And he's seeing, like, street urchins with torches like it's medieval Romania. And he's seeing all these wanted posters for murderers. And he's seeing anarchy symbols and, you know, kids stealing, you know... Hubcaps. Hubcaps and boosting cars. And so he goes back to his old estate where Rachel's staying. And he goes and pulls on a secret candlestick. And it opens up a secret doorway, which reveals his Reaper costume. He's like, I was Batman before Batman was cool. Basically, yeah. And so that's strike number two, I guess. Rachel's not the Reaper, nor was she ever Reaper. This old man was the Reaper, and now will be the Reaper again. He's like, I'm back. My work didn't matter. It didn't like make Gotham better since I left. So I got to keep reaping. 
So she's not the Reaper? She's not the Reaper, nor will she be the Reaper at the end of this story. There's no twist. There's no surprise. This guy, Caspian, is the Reaper. We're, we're like, we're 20 pages in and it's already just like, all right, here you go. Yeah. Well, because it's not about the Reaper. What a mystery. I mean, no, well, because it's not about a mystery. The, the mystery is... Why you think there's a mystery? No, like it's, no, because the the beginning of this book, they have like a whole like you know newscast about who the Reaper is. Yeah, it's this guy. He's not the Reaper. He just got back. He was the Reaper. When? when? Years ago. Yeah, years ago. He's an old man. When he was young, he was the Reaper. He then left. When he came back, he's like, I'm old, but I still got to reap. Oh, Reaper's got to reap. I gotta get my arthritis medicine and you know, take you my know, heart medicine. Uh, maybe sure he, maybe, maybe he's younger than he looks, but he has male pattern baldness. But we're supposed to believe that he's like in his fifties, I guess. Anyway, so uh, I understand now why Mask of the Phantasm made it the daughter. Yeah. Because it's like it's unbelievable for an old man to beat Batman physically. So they have like a well-trained younger woman beat the crap out of him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Reaper, uh, he murders some folk who are going to like steal some woman's purse and possibly violate her. Uh, he does so with twin scythes. With like maces. Yes. On the end. Yeah, those go over his hands. So he can like punch and cut and also swipe and murder. They also have guns in them, so like when he wants to, like a a, a barrel, a just barrel pop will out. pop out, and then he can blow you away, just in case the the scythes don't work. It's I'm, I'm, ranged. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. No, you gotta stay. <laughs> this is you too, signed up for this. This is too stupid. I have to leave. I'm just gonna assume it's it's Reaper from from Overwatch instead. Yeah, that just makes it better. Batman sees the signal. He's like, "Oh, Leslie, I gotta go." And Leslie's like, "Don't, Wait, don't I, be Batman." I thought he got rid of her. No, he she was just in the in the limo. Oh, okay. And she probably just read on the right. That's just it. That's the red herring. I'm not trying to bang uh, freaking Rachel. That's I'm gross. Trying to bang nope. Leslie, Leslie Tompkins. Not, no, I'll let nope, you say that. That's not okay. No. That's why. That's why I got you the office. You're a monster. You're right in my building. So anyway, I can walk into your office and be like, "So Leslie, what's going on?" Yeah, she's a gilf. So Leslie's like, "Don't be Batman. I I can't tr I can't stand you being Batman." He's like, "Shut up." And then he leaves, and I, and she's like, "Alfred, why do you let him be Batman?" He's like, "Don't don't give me a hard time. I'm Alfred." <laughs> So anyway, do you know Batman... how much shit I have to put up exactly. with? Exactly. You know how sad I am? Do, 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 do you preach to the choir, honey? Yeah. Please. Hey, we're around the same age. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> you want, I, got, I got two tickets to the ballet. Yeah. He's the Batman's not going to use. <laughs> so anyway, Batman Alfred, goes... Alfred, take these tickets. Oh, thank you, sir. And burn them. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you bet. I think I see the signal. <laughs> so then uh, Batman goes to Gordon, and they have like a little back and forth. And they're like, they're chums and pals. And Gordon makes a point about offering a mint to Batman because he gave up cigarettes. And Batman's like, good for you. Cigarettes are bad for you. By the way, I, I, I got you a present. And it's his signature pipe. The Batman hey, got him like I, a pipe. I know you're trying to get over the addiction. So here's pipe? something. I already bought it. Yeah. I... I'm sorry. And I'm really bad with context clues. Being yeah. like, oh, you're trying to quit smoking? Cool. Have a pipe. Have a small fireplace, all right? About two it's, inches from your mouth. It's just like, hey, I'm trying to quit smoking. Oh, you are. Well, I will see you later. Here is... Batman's like, I've got two $48. tickets. eight dollars I've got two tickets to the ballet. <laughs> exactly. You want to go with me? You want to go with Alfred? <laughs> Who? I mean, uh... Oh, shit. <laughs> all right, well. All right. I gotta kill you. <laughs> No, he... By smoking. <laughs> Here, have a pipe. <laughs> he gives him a pipe, which is like a little nice gesture of friendship. Mm -hmm. But also, like, it's too familiar for the year one Batman. Doesn't make There's any sense. There's a microphone in it. Yeah, I like to listen to... No. It's it's not him keeping tab. This isn't like the, the predecessor to Brother Eye. <laughs> anyway. Oh my god! So, uh... That's the Reaper costume? Yeah. That is garish as hell. I know. He has to look like that because his armor is made of leather. He looks like a medieval Cenobite. Yeah. Leather? No, it looks like muscles. Like, that's what it looks like they're trying to evoke. They're like, we made it red because it looks like muscles. Also, red's a cool color. Yeah. Right? Well, and it'll be a good contrast to Batman's blue. Anyway, Reaper's I'm the gonna... Mask of the Red Death? Something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Well, so Reaper dresses up as a John, and he goes to talk to some uh, prostitutes, and then he reveals that he's the Reaper, and he's going to kill them. He has a skull mask on, and it's just under a hat. There's shadows all over Gotham. So he's good. The hat provides the shadow. Yeah. Not impenetrable! <laughs> anyway, so Batman jumps on the Reaper and uh, he can't quite knock him down because Reaper's wearing some sweet armor. Mm -hmm. And so Batman's like, this is going to be harder but not impossible. Let's do this. So he fights Reaper. Of course, Reaper's skull mask isn't just for awesome decoration. It's also reinforced. So he like 
you know, knocks Batman in the face with it. And, of course, his twin sides do get the upper hand. And so, basically, Reaper's just slashing and and, and, and then attacking Batman. Ultimately, he just starts shooting at him, and Batman barely escapes with his life. He jumps into the sewers. You're telling me that once he starts shooting at him, Batman doesn't say, if you rely on guns... You're already, you've already lost. Exactly. No, he he doesn't. But that's that's important to remember. I'm glad you did. But uh, so Batman barely escapes with his life. He manages to get back to the manor in a state of complete defeat. Is he just laying in the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hurt, but I was also hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so. Alfred and Leslie Tompkins nurse him back to health. Oh, she's still... Oh, they totally bang. Oh, yeah. No, this is hours they later. They went to the ballet. Yeah, they went to the ballet, and then they went, and then they stopped off She's, like, cap. in her robe. It's a coat? That is straight up a robe. That is a fucking robe. Oh, yeah. yeah. A fucking robe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Batman's like, I lost to this loser. He doesn't say it's a loser. I'm saying it's a loser. We're all thinking I, it. Yep. So Batman's like, I lost... I had my skill, I had my strength, I had my training, I had my utility belt, and it still wasn't enough. I need to go to guns. What? I have to do the one thing that I've never done. Yeah. So he goes to a secret compartment under a giant portrait of his parents, and he retrieves a gun. Not just any gun, by the way. The gun that murdered his parents. No! That's right. Young Bruce Wayne recovered the gun, kept it, built a special secret compartment. And hid it underneath the picture of his dead parents. Yes. Theming. Remember before when I said I was going to leave? Yeah. Now you're going to leave? Yeah. Forget about it. No, no, no. Stick around. I'm I'm on board for this. No, you are both got to stay. We're yeah. not done yet. Snacks? So yes. Anyway, yeah. Batman wields Joe Chill's weapon. The show's not over yet. You got to stay too. So Batman is like... I'm going to use the weapon that made me what I am, and that'll give me the edge. And that'll make him a super Batman. <gasps> but I love the implication of the cover of the first issue. I saw that. I was like, all right. Yeah, Batman wielding a gun. This should be like one of the most striking images of Batman, because you're like, why would he do that? that? That's clearly Jim Gordon. He shaved his mustache. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> that's not Batman. This yeah. is an imposter. 30 years before Snyder came up with it. Right. So... Now, Batman's got his gun, and Todd McFarlane's drawing the book. <laughs> what? That's right. So it looks totally different. Yeah, so they brought in... Well, they had Alan Davis do it, and he was doing a great job. I love Alan Davis' as artist. It's modern, but it also harkens back to an older style. But it's... And he is only getting better. Like, he's... It's consistent, but, it, like, he refines his craft. It's good stuff. We never really got a, t- a chance to talk about it, but it's really good. Everyone always talks about Todd McFarlane's art, which, you know, take it as you will. But, like... I, but Alan Davis's art is consistent and like evocative. Well, it he, still it's looks cinematic. like an old style. But like it which also fits with year two, considering you're like you're looking back at like yeah, how Batman starts. Right, but like Mazzucchelli did the last one, and that was more of a modern style. I like this panel a lot. It's great. Right? I don't know why. I think it's the way he's holding it. Yeah. Because he could just be gripping it, but he was like, "No, I'm gonna have him." Yeah, I'm gonna hold. He like yeah, use it. I really like that. Yeah. No, Davis is details. Yeah. So hang on, we just were like Batman's gonna use a gun. Next issue, we'll get there. Yeah. Well, we it takes two pages literally, like police protecting a mobbed up individual because they're gonna testify, right? But Reaper okay. has a problem with that because this guy's scum, and anyone who protects that scum is also scum. So Reaper sneaks behind the enemy lines, murders the witness, and then, like, shoots all the cops that are protecting that witness. It's a good plan. Yeah. It's a good plan. Don't well, take he's, down the other guy. He's insane. We're supposed to illustrate that, like, not all vigilantism works in Gotham. Right. A special type of bat-themed vigilantism is, is all that we can withstand. Mm. Well, when you're called the Reaper... You really only have one course of action. Yeah. So, Reaper kills these people and escapes, while Batman starts demonstrating his ability to be an excellent marksman. That Batman is apparently an excellent shot. It's just that he's never used a gun in the field, but he has been keeping up with his with his general training. General training. Of course. And we've actually seen that in action in Batman the Cult where he used rubber bullets, but he also brought out, like, major guns and knew what he was doing and tried to train Jason and how to, like, shoot. And Jason's like, this is weird. And he's like, yeah, but, like, just because we don't use guns doesn't mean that we shouldn't know how they work and be excellent at using them. Otherwise, how can you dismantle them? Or take them away from your enemy and right? scatter play, them? Yeah. Or play laser tag. Right? Which, of course, is coming up, so make sure to finish the juice box. So, <laughs> anyway, Batman trains. Alfred is like, don't do that. Leslie's like, this sucks. Batman's like, She's still here? Yeah, she's still here. This is day three. 
He's like, what, do you live here now? You this, say no to the penthouse, this, but you're living in my he's house? Like, this is why I wanted the penthouse for you, honey. Yeah. Get out of my house. Look, if you're going to bang my butler, please do it in your own office. Yeah. Exactly. Could you not do if it, like, in my room? Because I know it, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Creepy. So anyway, we cut to the Caspians. It smells like mothballs in there. Ew. So uh, we get a little flashback as to why Rachel's father is such a lunatic asshole. And it's because a jerk in a mask murdered his wife, her mother. So he, he's like anti-Batman. Yes. Well, because only one person died. Oh, mm -hmm. he's Thomas Wayne. Yeah, but he's, he's Flashpoint Batman. Yeah, but his kid survived. No, that's true. The kid should have died. That's how Flashpoint Batman becomes hmm. Batman. So Rachel is comforted by a sister, which, of course, informs her decision to be inspired. You know, like the bat that goes to the window, Caspian sees violence and he becomes violence. Rachel sees the nun and she, through the, you know... right extreme violence in Gotham. It's like it's like anyone who loses a person in Gotham to violence and crime then sees some totem and then follows it to its logical conclusion. So somebody like threw a farmer through his window as he was thinking about all yeah. of this. Well, I think it's because Caspian is obsessed with like death and the Grim Reaper, right. which is why he adopts the Reaper. Okay. Rachel, of course, is hell-bent on becoming a nun, yeah. but she's also totally down to go out with Bruce on constant dates. And Bruce is more than happy to keep steering her away from the divine path. By the way, like, love the coat. I love how angry this guy is serving ice cream. I know. This guy, he he literally handles ice cream for a living. He couldn't be more disappointed. He's handling joy. And he's like, nah. I yeah. hate you all. <laughs> it's fun. It's a good contrast. Uh, they have a little back and forth where they discuss their ideologies and stuff like that. Batman, uh -huh. like, subtly. You know, she says, I, I sense that you're really deep. And he's like, nope, I'm a shell as they huh, come. Like a cave. Yeah. No, he's like, I'm a, I'm a rich person. Playboy philanthropist, what do you want from me? You know, I just like having ice cream during the day and going out with pretty ladies. That's, wow, man, I'm also a rich philanthropist then because I also enjoy having ice cream during the day. And it's going true. out with pretty ladies. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Batman goes to visit with Gordon and, uh, you know, Gordon's like, this Reaper problem is a major issue. And Batman's like, yeah, I know. I have a plan and it's very intricate and it will require some liberties to be taken and by the end of it, you may not want to be my friend anymore. Batman basically prophesizes that he will become the vigilante that he already was in year one. Okay. Uh, so Gordon got a tip that a major mobster is flying in from Metropolis. They mm -hmm. expect the Reaper to show up because the Reaper has basically declared war on the mob of Gotham. Right. Another thing, by the way. Uh, from the Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. Uh, not only does he kill mobsters, but he also like says creepy shit at them before he kills them, like the Phantasm. Mm -hmm. Difference being, Caspian has no connection to the mob, whereas, you know, of course, spoilers for Mask of the Phantasm, but Andrea's father, Beaumont, he was connected to the mob and owed them money, and so there was a connection there. Yeah. It, it was personal for Beaumont. Anyway, uh, so dude gets off the plane, uh, Reaper shows up. Batman is pretending to be a airplane, an airport uh, serviceman guy. Mm -hmm. It's great. I love the master. Of and he guy. plays the part really well. He's just chucking luggage. Yep. Yeah. yeah he's just he's stepping on luggage. He's not even looking. No. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so Batman faces off against the Reaper, and then uh, Gordon is gonna step in, and Batman shoots Gordon's revolver out of his own hand, and says like, "Back off!" This is now my fight and it he, he's not going to jail i'm going to shoot him with my gun no yep i don't need help so he shoots the gun out of gordon's hand mm -hmm. so uh batman and reaper fight he throws down some smoke pellets that keeps the police disoriented so reaper kills a couple of the mobsters guys and the fight between reaper and batman goes like up the stairs and into the plane mm -hmm. and, and then the plane takes off and they have a nice vacation again that'd be amazing if it did take off and they had like a mid-air fight yeah. but instead uh basically the reaper is like screw this i'm leaving so the reaper escapes batman protected the guy mm -hmm. the, the the mob guy from metropolis the reaper then basically blows up some fuel tank and then makes his escape and gordon's like damn you batman I'm like damn you and he takes the pipe out of his mouth and he snaps it in half and he throws it away nice Ooh. yeah and one of the cops is like gordon i thought that batman was on his side he's like me too 
So then uh, there's a big meeting between a whole bunch of mobsters in Gotham, and they're all talking about what they're going to do and about the Reaper. the Joker Reaper. shows up. Right, the Joker shows up, and he's like, I've got this, and it becomes Dark Knight. No, instead, Batman throws the other mobster that was coming from Metropolis onto the table, and he's like, I will protect you from the Reaper. Like, I gotta make a deal with the mob to take down the Reaper, because he's the most problematic issue. This is the most anti-Batman story you have ever told us. Mm -hmm. So Batman proves his resolve by kicking the crap out of a couple of guys, and they're like, "What do you, you know? How do we know that you're not going to double cross us once you've taken on the Reaper?" And he's like, "You don't." And they're like, "Well, then you are going to have to be assigned one of our top assassins." He's going to keep tabs on you and you're going to work together in tandem to take down the Reaper. Sure. So they assign Joe Chill, the no. man who murdered no. his parents. No. Batman, of course, knows that Joe Chill killed his parents. And so Batman's plan, now that he's been assigned Joe Chill, and maybe it was part of his plan to get close to Joe Chill, but his plan is he's going to take down the Reaper and then shoot Joe Chill in Crime Alley with Joe Chill's but gun. But first, he's got to stand around in a graveyard and look like Spawn. Yes. By the way, totally boss and cool double-page splash of Batman with a Spawn-esque cape. Thank this you, is, Todd. by the way, yeah, one of the two times that Todd McFarlane ever drew Batman. Oh. This and Spawn Batman. Ah, okay. That's it. And Batman looks dope. Thankfully, Todd did all like a number of covers for year two, so you I get mean, a couple of awesome. I mean, he's got a whole lot of cape there, though. That's way too much. Cape. It's implied cape. It's you know, it's it, it's it is visually there, but like you know, obviously, he, he can't have that much cape. It's like he's wearing an opera curtain. It's awesome. Did it have to be Joe Chill? It's so yes, it like, had to be Joe Chill on because, the nose. Yeah, Jesus. Well, because now it's personal for Batman. He's like, I got to take down the Reaper, but now I've got this opportunity what to get opportunity to he get revenge on my parents. He could have done this anytime. Yeah. He could have just gone to Joe Chill's apartment and snapped his neck. Agreed. So then Batman and Joe Chill work together and basically, like, take down mob guys who this are This is working. the worst part. Yeah. This absolutely sucks. The, Batman well, you haven't even seen what not... happens yet. So Batman and Joe Chill work together, and Batman makes a big point where he's like, Chill, we're not killing anybody. Like, except so, for you. Except for you, but you, I shouldn't have said that out loud. Yeah, and Joe Chill's like, yeah. wait, that gun, <laughs> I recognize that gun. Yeah. I used he that does. gun to kill the Waynes. Oh, he says, no, I used to carry a piece like that. And Batman's like, is that right? I'm having a good time. Yeah. Why doesn't he just kill him now? I Because then he would have kill, killed him. And then, you know, once he kills one person. <laughs> he has to kill every person. Well, then why is he using a gun? Because oh he has to, because he needs the gun to have the upper hand on the Reaper. He can't beat the Reaper with his usual Batman skills, so he adds the gun to level the playing field. And he needs to take down the Reaper by working with the mob and Joe Chill. And they, like, wind up getting information about where the Reaper might be, or where he's going to strike, and all this other stuff. Uh, meanwhile, they start having laughs and... Batman's like, you know, Joe Chill, you're not so yeah, bad. N right? Like, and he, Joe Chill is like an annoying character because he's like, he's all fun and he's, you know, making jokes and cracking wise about Batman and like how silly it is that Batman's even working with him. And, you know, he's, he's a fun kind of like affable character, even though he's a complete monster and a dickhead. Right. Uh, but Batman is like, mm -hmm. like no he's fun. He's a coiled is, spring yeah, of a man. No fun is being had. Uh, so anyway, then Batman takes Rachel out on another date. Uh, he takes out both Rachel and her father because he's like, you know, these are the two most important men in her life and so they're having a good time. And of course, they also invite Leslie because he knows, you know, Leslie knows both of them. Uh, so they're all coming out basically because... Is Alfred like, watching through the windows with binoculars? He might as well be because he was yeah. not invited. He's like, he's like, she's, she's cheating on I drove her there or I drove them there. Yeah. And, oh, no, that's fine. That's Who's fine, that old Leslie. guy? What a nice double date. Yeah. That's fine. So Caspian says a bunch of cryptic shit that, you know, of course implies that he's the Reaper. Batman doesn't put it together because he's the world's greatest detective. He basically just says, like, I love Rachel. I'm totally into her. And I'm definitely down, you know, to marry her. And Rachel's like, yeah, I'm totally down. Like, I'm in. Like, I love him and screw being a nun. That sucks. <laughs> okay, so that plan went out the window oh, for her. Oh, completely. No, she's like, <laughs> oh, wait. Okay. You're telling me I will... a handsome billionaire wants to marry me? Never mind. So long, God. Yeah. 
nice knowing you. The date is over. They mm-hmm. had a great time. Uh, Rachel's like, won't everyone come over? And then both Caspian and Batman are like, nah, we can't. We got shit to do. She's like, well, how do you like that? Like, two of the most eligible men in my life can't, you know, keep a date. You know, this is a cute little moment. But, yeah. like, both of them, of course, have to go be dark Avengers of the night. So. Meanwhile, Rachel's just like, so you're Batman and you're the Reaper, right? Right, exactly. Cool. And they just, like, choke on their soup. <laughs> what? No, that's afterwards. They have their nightcap. So the police, of course, have set up a sting because they're doing their job. Mm -hmm. And so when Batman and Chill enter this, like, drug den with the Reaper, all of Gordon's men show up along with Gordon. And Gordon's like, take them all down. And Batman knocks Gordon out of the way because Reaper's going to shoot Gordon. And Gordon's like, you're under arrest! And socks Batman in the jaw, which is totally justified, and I really appreciate the Gordon. Yeah. No patience for Batman. The Reaper, of course, starts opening fire and killing everybody, and Batman protects all the cops and, like, does well, his job. except for that guy. Yeah, well, that guy's... Well, you know, you, you gotta lose a few. <laughs> so... He was two days away from retirement. So Joe Chill shoots, like, some ether... Like, some ether canisters. Okay. And causes an explosion... Uh, and then... Which causes everybody to get their magic back. What? Yeah. That's what Ether does. Final Fantasy. Uh, like, Chill, <laughs> yeah. like, falls off, and, like, he's hanging on debris. He's like, little help, partner? And Batman's like... And he just sees his parents being murdered by Chill, and he's like... Okay. What? That's the moment! I you know. didn't kill him! You just didn't save him! Yeah, I know. That's or Batman's how about... MO. Just pull out your gun and shoot him in the face. Yeah, nope. No one's going to recognize the extra gunshot after the major explosion. Batman's playing the long game. Batman's like, oh, I'm blinded by the explosion, step on fingers. I know, Whoops. I know. By the long game, because... you mean that, like, on Joe Chill's deathbed. Yeah, he'll be like, I was Bruce Wayne, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, like, it's just, he's going to be like, oh, and after a long life of crime, I can finally just rest and go away. And Bruce Wayne's going to be like, hi. <laughs> You can't call for the nurse. Smother. Yeah. So after Batman saves Joe Chill, Joe Chill like gloats and flaunts their partnership. And he's like, well, we'll get him tomorrow. Right, Batman? And Batman's just holding on like, yeah, you got tomorrow. Okay, it's going to (laughs) happen. So then we cut back to like Batman going on another date with Rachel. Uh, He's getting ready for the date. Wow, Rachel got old. That's Leslie. Uh, So Leslie's just like thrilled that Bruce is dating this girl who could probably make him happy and make him stop being batman and it's great because batman's like all right well i'm going out and leslie's like oh with rachel again he's like of course with rachel i'm totally happy with her and do 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 and he's having a great time he's like leaving and leslie's like well have a good time hey alfred uh, you you seeing this and alfred's like yeah like they're both kind of like yay yeah and, like, and then alfred starts taking his apron off and taking his shirt off and he's like yeah. leslie's like all right let's polish that silver <laughs> She's like, hang on, I'm wearing the dumbest dress ever. So Bruce Wayne, of course, takes Leslie out to the finest Chinese restaurant where they both get fortune cookies before the meal. Uh, As you always do. She opens up her fortune cookie. There's an engagement ring in it. And uh, she accepts. He puts it on her. Uh, There's not really a whole lot of surprise there. He already said he wanted to marry her. I know, I know. Batman, by the way, uh, opened his cookie. Yeah. The fortune says, you may avoid your fate. But never escape it. Just a little like, eh. So he only planted her cookie? Yeah. He doesn't plant his cookie and it just says yes inside? (laughs) Or it even has the question, marry me? Like she pops the ring and his says marry me? That'd be perfect. I think his fortune says something like, you will have a long and happy life together or something like that. He only needs to theme the one cookie. No, his fortune should have said, I'm Batman. Yeah. (laughs) Well, oh my god, it's right. By the way, another <laughs> parallel with Mask of the Phantasm, because when Bruce proposes to Andrea mm-hmm. in the movie, he gives her the ring and she's like, I thought that I wasn't going to be part of the plan. And he's like, you are now, I'm changing the plan. And he's doing it on his grounds, and then these bats just fly out from under the ground and interrupt them, splits them, yeah. in, like, They're separates like, them. You married us! Yeah, the bats are like, no! <laughs> And they're both just like holding each other like, oh my God, how horrifying. I love that. And he's that. like, no, I like this. Uh, just like the, the swell, the music, it's just, it just fate being like, stop it. Bruce, you're getting a boner because of these bats? What? No. And he's like, no, no, they're very frightening, right? Like as though like that might be a great totem for someone mm-hmm. to have. Yeah, it's like a fear boner. Not mm-hmm. me. No, there's no boners. <laughs> yeah, stop it with the boners. You're obsessed with you're boners. You're a boner. <laughs> Laugh at my boner, will you? <laughs> I'll show them the biggest boner they've ever seen. <laughs> 
Anyway, so Gordon sets up another sting. Reaper shows up because he's an idiot. Batman shows up too. Uh, one of the guys that, like, uh, is one of the informants that was undercover as a bad guy dies. Uh, and so Gordon is just, like, on his last nerve. You know, he's just freaking out. And, uh, you know, Batman is sad that, like... He's not going to be Batman anymore? No, it's more like he knows that tonight's the night he's going to kill Joe Chill and he's probably going to stop being Batman. And he's just like, you know, I got to go out one last time, you know. Clear my head. Yeah. Do some bat stuff. Uh -huh. Kill so, a guy. Uh, yeah. So Batman uh, goes to uh, meet up with Joe Chill. Uh, he goes to his like divey apartment. He wakes him up. He's like, come on, we got to go. And Chill's like, oh, we're ready? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So he brings him to Crime Alley. Were you watching me sleep? Yeah. That's creepy. Yeah. I'm freaking Batman. There's a lot about me that's creepy. So he brings him to Crime Alley and he's like, does this place look familiar to you? He's like, I guess. Why? And hey, he's you like, want me to kill that Leslie Thompson chick? Tompkins. And no. <laughs> anyway, so he's like, do you, do, do you, well, think back. Think back about like maybe a seminal moment in your life, maybe about like 20 years ago when you ran into like a husband and wife that you tried to steal a necklace from. Do you remember that? He's like, well, how, how would you know anything about that? And he's like, because I'm freaking Bruce Wayne and you murdered my parents. What? Well, now he has to kill him. So now I'm going to kill you. And he just starts beating the crap out of him. Then he takes out Joe's gun mm -hmm. and he puts it up against Joe's head. Sure. And he's like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And Joe's like, yeah, sure you are. Like, you can't do it. You don't have the stones. Mm -hmm. And so Batman hesitates. And then the Reaper shoots Joe Chill in the face. Oh, what a surprise. Batman wanted to kill somebody, and then the book took care of it for him. Yes. Don't worry. You can still have your Batman and eat it, too. <laughs> so then Batman and Reaper fight. Uh, Reaper, of course, now knows. Again? Yeah, again. Wow. That's what this book is. There's no Joker in here. So, so why doesn't Batman just like... So, so you're telling me the Reaper now knows that Batman is Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne? yes. So they're fighting. And yeah. he doesn't take off the mask and be like, I'm her dad! No. <laughs> no. No, because Batman you doesn't know. can't kill never well, say yes then. I know, I know. So they fight, uh, and of course, like, this huge battle uh, rouses the suspicions and alert of the neighboring area, including the GCPD. Gordon shows up. They watch as Batman and Reaper fight on the scaffolding of the Wayne Foundation building. Sure. Because, yeah. Yep. So uh, they battle, and as they fight, uh, of course, Batman recovers one of Reaper's mace scythes and uses it against reaper thereby actually making the cover come to pass oh, oh it actually oh, happens got, oh wow that's literally the image yeah they, that's okay that's not the cover coming to pass that's they needed an image oh, that the cover. one is less de detailed see there's more detail it's oh he just, does have a gun on the cover I that's didn't even notice just a gun colored yet. differently so batman then <laughs> uses those two weapons and instruments to battle the reaper he oh i never the, needed the gun at all i just needed one of your weapons yeah there. now this is like a rachel ghoul fight i know well, except there's no, like, finesse or subtlety. So then uh, Batman hits Reaper in the chin with the sickle, and that knocks off his skull helmet, and he sees that it is actually Rachel's father, Caspian. And Batman's like, I am bad at this. I am a bad detective. Yeah. I heard your voice the entire time at dinner when we were fighting. He had a, he had a full God. mouth mask. He's, it wasn't like Batman where everyone should know it's Bruce Wayne. He's like, oh, wait a minute. All those things you said at dinner. Oh, oh, uh, oh. World's greatest detective. The whole thing's dumb because there's no way you don't know there's an old man in there. If right. You can see his mouth. That's true. So Batman, of course, knocks Caspian onto a convenient scaffold where he, you know, hangs for his life. Mm -hmm. And so Batman reaches out his hand. He's like, come on, Caspian, it's over. And he goes, yes, it is over. And I didn't think you were a killer, but I'm glad to know that you are. Now the city's safe because the city needs a murdering psychopath to keep it safe. Uh. And so Caspian lets go and then plummets to his death. Why doesn't Batman jump down and grab him and use like- A grappling hook? Or something. Yeah, it's pretty fast and far. No, forget it. Also it's a vertical like drop. He doesn't have the angle. I didn't kill you. I just didn't save you. That's still the same thing as murder. No, Batman doesn't not save him. It's just that Caspian's like, you were gonna I know you were going to kill Joe yeah. Chill. I took that away from you. But whatever. What anyway. he should have said instead was, I wasn't sure if you were a killer and you're not. And that's what the city needs. You yes. were not going to kill Joe Chill. Exactly. But I did it for you. Yeah. 
That would have been great, but instead Caspi needs the motivation to let go and die, which he does. So he lets go and he plummets to his doom. And Batman realizes that killing is wrong and guns are stupid. So he takes the gun of Joe Chill and he places it in the cornerstone foundation of the Wayne Foundation. This so is that, built like, on my will, parents' murder. Yes. So like the whole thing. Like Also, I'll always know what it is. If I haven't just, if I ever need it, it, I'll just with, get a jackhammer. Yeah, exactly. That's, yes, and he does in the next story. Oh, so, God! He hates guns, then he thinks he needs them, then he realizes that, like, he'd be a dick if he used them, so then he makes the gun a metaphorical cornerstone of, like, his future of Bruce Wayne. You could have just shot him in the knee, man. So, meanwhile, uh, you know, of course, the Caspian falls to the ground in the Reaper costume. Everyone's like, oh, Caspian was the, the Reaper. So Rachel's life is over, and Rachel is like, oh, Bruce, like, my father, he was a horrible murderer. And Bruce is like, yeah, that's right, but it's okay, because we're still banging. And she's like, my dad was a bad man and murdered lots of people. I need to atone for his sins. And become a so nun. So I'm a nun now. And God so she leaves. damn it. So Batman becomes a nun, which is similar to Did the you end. say Batman becomes a nun? So Rachel becomes a nun. Okay. And Batman is sad. Bruce has Alfred drive he and Leslie to basically Crime Alley, mm -hmm. uh, where he unveils... Her new office, the Thomas Wayne Memorial Clinic, where she wanted it, in the crappiest area of Gotham. Right. Which he financed and took care of. She's, she's like, like she's like sixty-five years old. Yeah. What's gonna happen after she dies? Is, is Leslie Tompkins one of those people who just doesn't seem to die from age? Yes. Okay. Like so, Alfred. Right. <laughs> so I love it because she says like, "Oh, thank you, Bruce. This is exactly what I wanted." She kisses him on the cheek and she's, "Are you happy?" And he says, "It doesn't matter." What do you think, Leslie? Right? What do you think? <laughs> and then he socks her in the jaw. <laughs> yeah. This is what Gordon did to me. That's, that's all I'm going to do to people Stop now. banging in my house! Yeah. <laughs> I love it because he says, he actually tells... He just punches Alfred. He <laughs> instructs Alfred, wait for her. Like, with the car. He's like... Oh, yeah, no. I, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't going anywhere, Master Bruce. And he says, like, you know, but it's getting dark. And Batman says, it's okay. I can always find my way in the dark. And you get a totally awesome spawn. I mean, Batman <laughs> splash page where Batman does something totally, like, awesome looking in the biggest cave imaginable. Well, look at him with his grappling hook. Yeah, the thing he didn't use to save Caspian. So <laughs> that's Batman Year Two. It is a silly slugfest between Batman in his prime and an old man. The only reason and I Batman got... almost loses. Yeah, he really does. I, the only reason I'm... He basically does lose. He doesn't win at all. Well, he loses in every respect because he loses his integrity by choosing to use a gun. Mm -hmm. He loses physically by losing to an old man. He loses, he loses the girl. He loses the girl. He loses any credibility because he goes against the police and works with Joe Chill and the mob. Yep. He oh. lost that investment on the pipe he gave to Gordon. Totally. <gasps> by the way, uh, Gordon, after he sees Batman in action and sees that like Batman was like playing the long game and looking like a monster vigilante to lure the Reaper in and get him, like, Gordon decides to forgive Batman and he's like, oh, you were totally on the level the entire time. I'm sorry I was so mad at you. And he tapes his pipe back <laughs> exactly. together. Exactly. There is no moment where that happens and it's also really dumb because when Batman gives Gordon the pipe, you're like, this is where the pipe comes from. And then Gordon destroys the pipe. So it's like, so I guess the idea is that it's more of a metaphorical pipe. Like, Gordon starts smoking pipes because of Batman, but wouldn't it be made, it would be more fun and thematic if he was literally the pipe that Batman gave him? Like, everything about this is dumb and they couldn't have retconned it out fast enough. And indeed they did, but not before they did a friggin' sequel no. called Full Circle where there's a new Reaper in town. And, Bat and, and Gordon has a new pipe. Gordon has Th a new pipe. Does that mean that Gordon ran out to the store because he was like, I need a pipe. And I have to remember what the other one pipe looked like. Exactly. Oh my God, this pipe was $2,000. <laughs> well, yes. How does Batman afford these things? Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my God. Well, oh, the last one that was bought was bought by Bruce Wayne. Batman knows Bruce Wayne. That's pretty cool. Yeah, how lucky. <laughs> but yeah, so there is a sequel. It's full. It's called Full Circle. Batman and Robin fight the Reaper, and there's like a new Reaper in town, and he almost loses again. Is this time? Is it is her? It, yeah, it should be Rachel, right? No, it's Joe Chill's son. I'll put a link in the description so you can get probably this deluxe edition, which Don't. has both of them. But you can really get either of them in any long box at any Comic-Con or garage sale. And I wouldn't pay more than a dollar for them. It's you, not worth it. The only thing that it came out of this that's good 
is Mask, Mask of the Phantasm. Is Mask of the Phantasm. I was going to say McFarlane drawing Batman, but you even get that in Spawn Batman. No. And you get better color. It's literally Mask of the it's Phantasm. It's Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah. Which took this story, they were like, this is a stupid story. Yeah. No how, one, how would I fix this? No one will be mad at me for redoing it. No like, No one. And McFarlane does some cool stuff. There's a great looking sequence where Gordon destroys the pipe he gets from Batman. I love how the color and the lighting works in that scene. Gordon looks cool. Every shot where Batman is swinging looks totally awesome. I love the exaggerated nature of the cape. You know, you're, yeah. you're talking to a Spawn fan back in the day. So, like, I'm no stranger to exaggerated capes. And seeing Batman with an exaggerated cape is pretty fun. Especially Batman being in a graveyard. You know, it's a pretty dope image. And, you know, you get a bunch of other stuff out of there. But, like, the story is... You know, silly and hokey at best, and horrible and damaging at worst. Uh, I've never, no, no, and, and no that's never. Why, that's why, by the way, no one. That's why Long Halloween is year two. Yeah. yeah. Like, and by the way, they didn't even wait for the New Fifty Two to retcon it out. You know what I mean? They're just like, no. I think it was zero hour. They were like, this never happened. Thank God. So really, this is a story of how much Alfred is banging Leslie, Leslie Tompkins. Tompkins. Absolutely. Like, all the time. Yes. Yep. It, the only subtlety in the book is Alfred and Leslie Tompkins' relationship. Yes. Which, of course, is not really in the book, by the way. Oh, it's in there. No, it's, it's in not. It's in between the panels. It's barely implied, and even then it's not. It's only implied when if you're When he's polishing in that silver, his tie is undone. Yes. He's... And she's wearing a robe, for At God's one sake. point. Yeah, no, they are. Yeah. And not to mention, like, that poli- that silver's been polished, like, five times already that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's well. just going, oh, yeah, no, I've been doing this. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. And Batman doesn't pay attention. And it's roughly phallic-shaped, too. I, mean, does, I love Batman doesn't pay attention. He's just yeah. like... He's, like, keeping up appearances. Batman's like, what? I'm sorry, who? Oh, right, Leslie Tompkins, the woman who practically raised me. Right, all right. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Bad Issues. We'll see you guys next time with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long.